Hello, in this video we would like to start our module on machine learning. The idea here is to provide a simple and general introduction to machine learning. In these videos, we will define what machine learning is and discuss why and how it works. Then, we will explore what sort of problems can be solved using machine learning and provide examples of use cases. We also want to define and understand the fundamental concepts in machine learning such as overfitting, cross-validation, BC dimension, regularization, and so on. So, if you are interested in learning more about machine learning in general, whether you are a newcomer on this topic or have some experience, this module could potentially be helpful. It could help you get a better understanding of machine learning, obtain some intuition behind its algorithms, and understand why it is so important in this day and age. This is just the first introductory video. We will be providing some basic ideas here, and we will dig deeper in the following videos in this series. So, what is machine learning? According to Arthur Samuel, who was a pioneer in the field of artificial intelligence, machine learning is a field of study that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. In that sense, we want to teach machines or computers to learn how to do tasks for us. This concept is different from the traditional computer programs that you might be familiar with. So let's first consider the standard computer programming paradigm. Let's say we want to write a very simple program that takes the temperature in Celsius and converts it to Fahrenheit. How do we do that? Well, we know that there is a mathematical expression that provides the relationship between these two scales. We know that f is equal to 1.8 times c plus 32, where f is the value in Fahrenheit and c is the value in Celsius. So essentially, if you think about this, a computer program takes some input x and produces some output y, which is an unknown quantity that you want to learn. It is required that an explicit pattern or relationship exists between x and y. As another example, let's say I want to write a computer program that discovers the shortest way between two locations in a city. Here, the input of the program consists of the map of the city as well as the two locations x1 and x2 in the city. The output y is the shortest path. So, you may write some equations or some if-else logic that solves this problem for you. The simple structure of using some x as an input to create some output y exists in machine learning as well, but with a fundamental difference. In machine learning problems, usually it is not easy to write a mathematical formula to map x to y. There is a pattern between x and y, but it is not easy to write it down. This relation might be very complex or vague, and it is not usually an exact mathematical relation. It is sort of a probabilistic relation. Let's try to understand this better with an example. Suppose that I want to write a program where as an input it is given an image of either a cat or a dog, and the program is supposed to identify if the object in the image is a cat or a dog. So the output is the label of the image that can take two possible values, cat or dog. These types of tasks are known as classification problems since the output will tell us the class or label that the image belongs to. In this specific case, we want to know if the image is a dog or a cat, but in a general case, there could be more categories. In this example, the input is an image of a dog or a cat, and the output is a label dog or cat based on the highest score or probability given by the classifier. Now the question is how do we do this? This problem is different from the problem of converting Celsius to Fahrenheit or the shortest path problem. Defining if there is a cat in an image requires the program to somehow analyze the relationship between the pixel values of an image and the labels. If we represent an image as a sequence of pixel values, it is not easy to find a logical mapping or a mathematical formula to distinguish between a dog and a cat. So there exists a pattern, but it's not easy to discover or express it mathematically. These are usually the types of scenarios where machine learning can be useful. How does machine learning work? A main idea is trying to mimic how humans learn. As an example, let's see how a child may learn to distinguish between a dog and a cat. As a kid, you initially do not know what the difference is, but as you see a cat on the street, or in a movie, or in your house, you start identifying what is a cat and what is not. So one way humans learn things is by seeing a lot of examples, and we want to do the same thing with computers. 
This is indeed the idea behind supervised learning, which is the form of machine learning most widely used in practice. Here, the goal is to learn a mapping from input X to output Y given a set of examples, that is, a set of input-output pairs called the training data. So the data is extremely important, and one reason why machine learning has become more powerful is that it has become much easier to collect data. Having a large set of examples makes machine learning algorithms more powerful and easier to train. This data trains the computer to do the desired task. Now, it might seem magical. So how do we do this? Let's say we have a large collection of images and the labels of those images. The labels say the first one is a dog, the second one is a cat, and so on. The fundamental idea here is that people over the years have developed generic or standard mapping functions that can be trained and tailored to the desired task using the training data. What does this mean? If you remember, the basic paradigm says that we have some input and some output, and we are trying to create the output from the inputs. This is a mapping from x to y. In mathematical language, it is a function where you give x and it gives you y. For example, the Celsius to Fahrenheit function is given by y is equal to 1.8 times x plus 32, which is a fixed function. Now, in machine learning, instead of a fixed function, we can think of some very useful and effective tunable functions. This concept is very important since it means that instead of having a fixed function, I have something like y is equal to some number theta 0 plus theta 1 times x1 plus theta 2 times x2 and so on. It means that as I change the parameters, theta 0, theta 1 and so on, I am able to get a different function. So machine learning uses these standard tunable mappings, which means that we are going to use the training data to tune the function for what we want it to do. For example, if my task is to distinguish between a dog and a cat, when I give the computer a large number of examples of dogs and cats and the labels, these parameters are tuned in a way that they are giving me a function to distinguish between a dog and a cat. That is the basic idea. Of course, we are going to discuss it in much more detail in the next videos. Machine learning is usually used when you want to do a task that can be summarized as predicting the output y from a set of inputs. When we say predicting, we mean reducing the uncertainty that you have about y. There is some unknown y and you want to get information about it. This relationship between x and y is not easy to write down, but we have data on it. A simple machine learning method is linear regression. For simplicity, let's say you have a single input x and the output is y as usual. You can have a function that looks like this. The output is theta 0 plus theta 1 times x. Now, if we visualize this linear function, we can say that this is a tunable function because if you change its parameters at theta 0 and theta 1, it gives you a different function. Theta 0 represents the intercept with the y-axis and theta 1 helps us to identify the slope. So, by changing theta 0 and theta 1, we can obtain different functions. Of course, this is not all the possible functions, but you can observe that there is an opportunity to tune the function based on the training data and learn the parameters of the function. This function then helps us to predict the value of y based on x. Thus, it helps us to reduce the uncertainty that we have about y. The whole idea is that we feed the training data into a machine learning algorithm. The machine learning algorithm uses this training data to tune a function. That is, we learn the parameters of the function. The learned parameters make the function do what you want it to do. Let's provide a simple and practical example that could be used in a business setting. Suppose that a bank wants to have an algorithm to help identify whether to approve a loan request from a given customer. Of course, the bank wants to give loans to only customers that are likely to be profitable, which means that they are going to pay back the loan, otherwise it could be a huge loss for the bank. How do you approach this problem? The first step is to formulate the problem. That is, we need to identify the input variables x1, x2, and so on, and the output variable y. Let's first see what y is. Our goal is to know whether to approve or deny the loan request. So you can say the variable y can take two values, yes or no. When y is yes, it means that the loan is likely to be profitable for the bank. And when y is no, there is a considerable risk that the loan will result in a loss for the bank. What are the input variables here? 
These are the features that can be used to determine if a customer is profitable or not. For example, salary, age, employment status, and so on. There could be a large number of features that are potentially useful in estimating the profitability of the customer. Here, it is very reasonable to assume that there is a pattern. Given some data about the customers, we should be able to provide some guess about the output, that is, the profitability of the customer. However, this relationship is not obvious. You cannot simply write a mathematical equation for this. So this is where machine learning could be potentially useful. The next step is to obtain training data. This can be obtained from the historical data. The bank has customer data and knows how profitable each loan was. Let's say that the bank can look at the past 10 years and look at all the loans that have been approved and see which customers were profitable. The training data is the available features of the customers and it also includes the labels that say if the customers were profitable or not. We can think of the training data as this large table where each row corresponds to a customer and the columns correspond to the features. In the end, we have a column that shows the labels. So, there is a pattern between X and Y that the machine learning algorithm can hopefully learn using a standard tunable function to distinguish between profitable and unprofitable customers. This was our first introduction to the topic and we are going to get deeper. We will provide more information about the types of learning and illustrate more examples. We will also look at the issues that arise in machine learning in the following videos. Thank you.